what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hello fellow troops, this is Sketching Fire 3 with some more Minecraft Love Hunt. Gather a bunch of netherrack, we all need it. You all nodded and split off and you bounded off to the side creating a small strip mine to easily gather a big amount of the nearby material. Don't look at that, they're looking directly at the enderman and that's not okay. As you run away you heard a loud gasp echo from outside the cave. Guys, the fortress is right here! You raise your eyebrows and spreads. It was just near spawn. That's so lucky. You hardly mind a little bit, uh, a bit more netherrack before running outside, catching up to Sabnab, who had evidently done the exact same. Nice find, Goggy. George. Oh, George. Okay, I got it. George seemingly cringes out the nickname that was cut off from reacting due to the fact that Dream had ruffled his hair. Everyone follows George's lead towards the structure. As your group approaches the nether brick walls, everyone look everyone took turns in using their bundles and nether act to maneuver up to an entrance. And then they fall and die in the lava. As you helped each other up the ledge, George gasped as a wither skeleton attacked him. He had managed to bring up his shield in time to block it. George! Oh, I'm gonna have to take that on you, okay. I'm fine, let's just go. He shoves the mob back as everyone darted off to the opposite direction. Jim points towards the nearby blaze spawner, calling Sapnap to his side. As they both began to farm for the needed blaze rods, George was busy defending the area from the other mobs that have followed you. The two different mobs began to multiply as time passed and you knew you had to help out somehow. Assist George. You bound it over to George as quick as you can, swinging your axe at nearby wither skeletons before shoving the others away with your own shield. George looks at you in surprise. Of course, stop with that. Catching fire three, you. But he was cut off when two more skeletons had bumped against him. You reprimanded him, saying that it isn't the right time to complain about your split second choices. He silently nodded, working on defending the other two as they handed each other sides. We have enough, let's go. Well, this is very damning. You all fought your way through the fortress grounds and went to the nearby netherrack field. As you dashed through the terrain, you noticed Dream and the others weren't heading for the portal. You racked your brain as you wondered why, but remembered that you needed the easiest and quickest way that you all could think of for obtaining ender pearls, and that was through piglin trading. You all looked for a biome that had enough mobs that were available for trading. Dream hollers over to you guys to dig up a hole to surround at least two or three piglins. George passes his golden helmet over to Dream as he tosses his gold ingots towards the hog light humanoids, leading them to the hole you all made. With no gold to pass the piglins' tastes, the others have begun to run towards everyone else. Sapnap was on one end of the pit fighting against two guests that have simultaneously spawned and George was on the other end fending off other piglins and a few wither skeletons that had followed your group. Dream, make it quick! I'm trying! Dream! Uh, I'll fight off piglins. Making up your mind, you take long strides towards the older male who seemed to have a tiny bit of trouble fighting off the mobs. You tell George that you can handle the skeletons and have him. Ah, oh, dang it! I should have done the other one because I did George before. I think. You tell George that you can handle the skeletons and have him run around the area as much as you can to stall time for Dream to make the sufficient amount of trades. Sounds like a plan, catching. He then began to run around and lead the other piglins away as you exchange hits with the wither skeletons in front of you. Everything began to overwhelm you. I think they forgot the W. From the amount of mobs surrounding all of you to the huge amount of pressure you're feeling right now. Sabnap began to call out Peeve Toin's uh, to toin, tone seeping out of his voice. Dream? Dream rolled his eyes. Let's go this way. He was visibly irritated as he was pressured, but hopefully everyone would shrug it off. 
You all bolted towards the right direction to the portal, the one you finally recognized and gasped in relief when you spotted the familiar purple particles flaring into the air. Dream reaches at first not entering the vortex and instead opted out to take a swing at an approaching aggressive piglin mod. Get in now! Without a second thought, Sabnap and George had entered the portal, their bodies slowly disappearing into the overworld the longer they stayed in. You glanced back at Dream and hesitated. You didn't want to leave him behind. Dream frowned at you. Go! When you didn't budge, Dream had instead pushed you through the portal. Well, it wouldn't work because I'd have to stand in there. Oh, God. And then he dies. When you came to, your first reaction was to frantically check your surroundings for your other companions. We're here, catching. We're here. From behind you, you hear Sapnap up and George seemingly out of breath. The older of the two was lying on his back, whilst the other was seated on a nearby grass block and wiping the sweat from his chin. I'm guessing Sapnap is older, because it looks like he's sitting on a block. George's voice wavered when he spoke. Where's Dream? Your heart sank when you had to explain what had happened before you teleported back into the overworld. They both frowned at this. Oh, of course he would. We have to go back, see if he's still there. We need to help him. Before the argument could get any bigger, Dream had suddenly appeared into the overworld. He landed onto the grass with a harsh thud. That must hurt. Dream! You all rushed over to his side, to which he waved off, but Sabnap and George helped him up onto his feet. I'm fine, I'm fine. Health check, guys. You all warily nodded before looking up to your own health bars. George says that he has four left. You and Sabnap have the same amount of three. Dream only had half a heart. Sabnap frowned as George crossed his arms. What happened to being careful, Dream? Dream waves him off as he pulls out a piece of bread to replenish his hunger and to regen. All that matters is that we're fine. It was our first and hopefully last time in the nether. Of course, it did end up messy. You were about to hand him your golden apple, but he noticed and stopped you from doing so. I told you, you'll need it more than I do. You frowned but didn't push. You stashed it back into your inventory. Sabnap approached him to craft eyes of Ender. Am I, am I making my own commentary or just reading this? I just realized it's been seven minutes. Hmm. As they successfully crafted a few, Dream flicked one up. It slowly rises and leans towards one direction before ultimately plunging to the ground and breaking, shattering. It's gone. No, I know it has, like, uses to it. The blonde catches it right before it lands and double checks if it's snapped, snapped into. Well, we have our lead. Let's go. You all then fell into step with each other. The walk was quiet, save for the occasional clinking of the ender eyes that came from Dream. It was a bit too quiet for your liking. Uh, this time it's stopping up. He was nearer to you, being in the middle of the small line to follow the leader. You checked up on him as he finished up an apple. Oh, catching! Yeah, I'm all good now. What about you? Are you okay? You nodded your head, earning a smile from the brunette. He stretches his arms out wide, the popping of his joints quite audible. That was quite terrifying, huh? Uh, yeah it was. Yeah it was. You wouldn't want to admit that it scared you per se. Again, with the per se, you don't need that. But you had to agree that it was too close for comfort. Sabnap gives you a smile. I'm glad you had our back catching. I should have just put catching. You grinned back at him, feeling at ease that you should could be of use to them. Everyone stopped walking when Dream halted in his tracks. It's down here. He announces as he whipped out his pickaxe, beginning to mine away through the ground. George and Sapnap had gone to do the same thing on either side of him, so you decided to follow through and mimic their actions in front of the hole Dream made. Ooh, it's dark. So dark that I can't even see. That is just like Minecraft, actually. I, I've i played Minecraft before. I still play it from time to time to make my resource pack. But this is definitely how it looks, even with the highest brightness setting. You continue to go... Uh, you continue to dig deeper, not even paying attention, until you realize you've dug through the stronghold ceiling and fell through. Oh, I heard that. Broke the legs. Catching! Catching! 
You dealt a bit of damage to yourself thanks to your clumsiness. Dream had safely landed with a water MLG and so did George. Although he let his water spread around for a bit for Sapnap to land safely in. You're gonna give us a heart attack, Katzing. Be careful next time. You let out a shapeless chuckle as you pulled out an apple from your inventory and proceeded to munch on it to regen. You all took a better look at which part of the stronghold you guys were located in. You all realized you were in the middle of it with three pathways. The end portal, the library, and a way to another hallway. Sabnot lets out a huff. Huh. Lucky. You padded off the remaining dirt- uh, You padded off the remaining dirt- uh, Wait. You- What? Th there's no need for both offs. You padded off the remaining- Dirt on your clothes as Dream be See, that's how it works. You padded off the remaining dirt on your clothes. Or you padded the remaining dirt off of your clothes. That's how that works. As Dream began going towards the portal room, getting rid of the silverfish spawner before starting on filling in the gaps of the portal itself. This makes me want to play Minecraft, but I have no one to play it with, so it doesn't matter. Sapnap scratches his head before heading off to the empty hallway that led to an iron door. I'll go over here and check if there's any stuff I can grab before we enter. Same, I'll check over here. You were then left to your own devices yet again. Go down the hall. You jogged over to Sapnap's side. Well, it makes sense because I did George twice. He shoots you a grin appreciating your company. Ooh, look at treasure chests. You both walk down the empty corridor in front of chests in between a bunch of slabs. <gasps> Bingo! He opens up the chest excitedly to find a bunch of rails, coal, and three pieces of bread. Sabnas stashed the bread before closing its lid and leaning onto the chest. He seemed unsettled. You think we can take a breather? Stay here for a second. Everything's just so overwhelming. Oh, now they spell it right. I need to catch myself for a bit. Which I don't... I get that dating simulators don't always have the right spelling. But I mean, still... It's, if this is made as a joke, I guess it was made as a joke, technically, but, I mean, I like when I can actually read something properly. United sitting on the slab next to the chest. You hear Sapnap heave alongside. Catching, you turn to him, his face unsure. I hope you don't mind me, like, rambling, sort of. I don't normally, I mean, I could say I'm usually affectionate with, I didn't even get to finish that and I didn't click anything. Sabnap inhales deeply before correcting himself. What I mean is, catching, I think you're really cool. I don't normally say these things aloud, but I just thought I'd let you know. You're cool too, Sabnap. I like you too. Sabnap looks at you with wide eyes, his face flush. Huh? Huh? That's what it is, not huh, it's a huh. And then his face breaks out into a grin. That's cool, that's really, really cool. It seems that he was rendered quite speechless as he was reduced to only a goofy smile on his face. He stands up and gives you a hug. Surprised, you slowly hugged him back. After a bit, you both pull away from each other. Sapnab's face was flushed, but his smile was still permanent. Sabnap then steps away and stretches his arms out. Let's head back, yeah? George is probably back from the library by now, and Dream's definitely done with filling up the portal. You agreed and followed him back towards the portal room. You agreed and followed him back towards the portal room. As everyone started to group, regroup, the quiet humming of the finished end portal echoes out. Nervously, Sabnap speaks. Uh, any encouraging words before we hop in? Yes, don't die. Turn to George, because I did stop and have last time. When George meets your gaze, his face was slightly tinted pink. But me? You want me to? All three of you had simply encouraged him with smiles on your faces. George sighs, shaking his head a bit before looking at you all with a smile of his own. Alright then. I know most of this was my fault, but there's no time to dwell on that now. W what matters is that we're close to what's probably the solution and that we'll be all be able to escape this room and return back home. Everyone had given e This has to be a dream because... Well, a dream, get it? <laughs> dream SMP. 
Everyone had given each other affirming glances, reassuring one another that they're ready before staring down towards the black vortex. Whoa, zoom in to the screenshot. You gripped on the axe and shield you were wielding, your nerves making you feel all jittery. On three, Sabnap shakily breathes. <sighs> One, two, and everyone began to run up. Three! You braced yourself as the discomfort of teleporting began to set in. You covered your mouth as you landed onto the obsidian platform trying to get a hold of yourself. And then they suffocate because they're in space. George shakes his head as he checks on everyone right after landing. Catching, are you okay? You wave them off, coughing as you do so. It doesn't particularly convince him, but he trusts you enough to regain your balance yourself. Like, I've, when I was younger and was recording Minecraft, nobody ever called me Catching Fire 3. They always called me Catching or Fire or Catching Fire. They never said 3. But I remember it's always been Catching, which I'm okay with because... It's a shortening of my name, yeah, on, on, of my YouTube name, my Minecraft name, my everything name, pretty much. But, uh, it doesn't bother me. Dream and Snapnap seem to have gotten used to the feeling of teleporting as they appeared fine. You struggled to get back on your feet as they began to build their way towards the center of the island where the dragon was situated. You got yourself on your feet and caught up to them. Go ahead and push towards the dragon. I'll take care of the ender crystals. Make every shot count, George. Of course. He runs off to the sides as he already begun aiming at the top of the pillars. Dream turns to you. Me and Sabnab will go ahead and land attacks on the ender dragon. You steer clear from her, alright? Kill some endermen and grab the pearls they drop so that we can filter them to, to us or use them for yourself if you have to flee. You oblige, staying in the outer ring of the island as the two childhood friends rush towards the middle. You dared to make eye contact with the tall, void-like mobs to aggravate them. It proved effective as they begin to open their mouths, their irritating buzzing getting louder as they launch themselves at your shield. You shoved them away and attempted to land hits on them whilst taking caution of any of their attacks that managed to get near to you. And now I'm looking at the butt. That's the butt. After looking at, uh, looking, after taking at least two hits from the mob, you counted the amount of ender pearls you've gained whilst eating some bread to regenerate your health. Seeing that you've gotten quite a lot, you quickly jump onto the middle of the th into the middle to throw some to Dream and Sapnap. Thanks, catching. Sapnap manages to catch all of it, tossing the other half towards the blonde who had just landed his water MLG. After a few more minutes of combat, uh, combat. It seemed that the Ender Dragon's health had depleted until halfway. George had done his job of shooting all the healing crystals. You were busy looking around for the older male when the dragon had launched a fireball n near you. You had only heard a soft thudding sound, and before you knew it, you were surrounded by purple particles that began to burn you. And then I died. Catching! Use the Nine Rule. Get out of there! You fumble over the items in your inventory, finally stumbling, stumbling over the sphere-like object and throwing it away to somewhere safer. And then you die. I'm waiting for me to either die and wake up or wake up in this world or something, respond. Your breath was shaking and in short puffs as you teleported, you looked up to your health bar to see you had two and a half hearts left. Catching, are you okay? You wanted to reassure them that you're fine, even a wave of your hand, but the required effort to do as such was too much for you and ended up making you feel light, a lot more lightheaded. George, we need you! Being the nearest one to you, George glances back to you worriedly. You shook your head in an attempt to tell him to go help the others. George furrowed his eyebrows together before turning away and ran towards the middle, and then I die. I'm right here. We need your help in keeping the dragon away from catching. Got it. Right, Dream was the sole person out of everyone in your group to have experienced being on half a heart, and you were close. To say it hurt was sugarcoating it. You felt excruciating pain as your heart tried to make up for the blood that you've lost from the recent situation. But you didn't lose any blood, you're just on half a heart. As you breathed heavily, you fiddled around for the golden apple that stayed in your inventory the entire time. 
The last time you glanced at the dragon's health bar, it was nearly finished. Just a few critical hits and it would be over. You sighed as you took your time, finally being able to fish out from all your belongings. You were about to eat it when you heard a bellowing noise from above. The ender dragon was coming right at you. Catching! You froze up and shut your eyes tight as you braced yourself for what was about to happen. You heard the noise of a hit. You didn't feel any pain. You opened your eyes and saw that it was all a dream. Or not. George, who had his bow up and fired his last arrow at the dragon that had been only one hit away. The dragon screeches as it levitates, light protruding its, from its body. As you slowly descend, as it slowly disintegrates and spikes of particles and XP experience points, and right then a sound effect echoes about from George himself. George not found has made the advancement free the end. Interesting. Everything was silent before all three of them began to whoop loudly. Whoop whoop! Oh my God, George, you did it! Yeah, that's our boy. George was then lifted into the air by the two, the male himself laughing loudly as they all cheered. But then I'm dead. After a whole while of being stunned, you let out your share of giggles. The boys turned around as they heard you laugh. The two childhood friends had glanced at each other with a glint of mischief in their eyes before running towards you with George still on their shoulders. Whoa guys, let me down! The two had simply laughed at him before letting him get off as they stopped right in front of you. Dream helped you up to your feet, giving you the golden apple you dropped to heal up. You nodded at him in thanks, feeling a whole lot better as you took a bite out of it and turned to see a uh, sap nap, pushing a blushing George towards you. Come on, George. Kiss. 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 No. <laughs> when he was right in front of you, you had simply thanked him for being brave and saving your life. I'm really glad you're okay catching. He wasn't one who can easily convey his emotions through words, you figured. You gave out a soft laugh as you cupped his cheek, letting him have a bite of your golden apple. Oh! Thanks, catching. Jim laughed at the exchange, his hands on his stomach as he cackled. George sent him a glare, going to the point of even rolling his eyes at the male's reaction towards you two. Alright, you two are cute, we get it. Come on, let's go home. Finally. You nodded and all four of you had walked up to the middle. Dream and Sabnab had hugged each other sideways as they made their way to the portal, the antics making you stifle a small giggle. You hope that once you all jump in, you will all, one, be able to come back home safely, and two, remember everything that had happened. You were so nervous, but this was so far your only choice, to jump into the unknown. You felt something grab a hold of your hand. Your gaze trailed from the portal to see that it was George himself. He had a soft, reassuring smile on his face as he squeezed your hand. Kiss already, God damn it! I'm not being here to just be cock blocked and blue balled. Come on. You were sure that he was nervous too. On three, everyone grinned at him. One, two, three! Damn it, no, hold on. Three! You woke up on your bedroom floor, clutching at your throbbing head. It seemed that you had fallen over your chair. You hear your phone buzzing from your desk, groaning, you crawled over to check what your notifications were going off for. For the first few stems, it had been from your friends as you were apparently late for your high pixel game together with them. The most recent one was, George not found went live fixing my chair. George not found. George. Minecraft. The Realm. You quickly pressed on the notification, the stream's audio booming out of your phone's speakers. Sorry guys. I know we were supposed to be doing a Minecraft challenge right now, but our connections did some sort of blip and now my chair is wrecked. The chat roars in laughter, finding it hilarious that he had fallen off of his chair to the point of breaking it. Wow, chat. You guys aren't feeling nice tonight, huh? Your heartbeat rising, you impulsively sent a dono to try and catch his attention. He stops holding the pieces that belong to his chair to check the donation. Okay, who just donoed? Thank you for the... George stopped himself when he read your username. Catching Fire 3? Hold on, DM me on Twitter. Do you have the same user? You had to be quick. You knew how fast people can be at taking names and usernames and impersonating people. You immediately transferred to Twitter, the stream turning into a picture-in-picture -picture form and situating itself at the bottom corner of your phone and sent him a message. George! It's me. Do you remember everything? The Minecraft Realm, the library, the golden apple? 
Your heart re rate picks up as you anxiously wait for a response. You hope you were quick enough. You heard just quick typing noises from a stream as the chat zoomed by with your name combined with a bunch of question marks asking who you were. Then suddenly someone joined the call. Dream! George, what the hell are you doing? It's Catching Fire 3! What do you mean it's Catching Fire 3? Meet your mic on stream, you don't... The audio from both Dream and George's mic have been silenced. And then suddenly you have a notification beep from Twitter. Catching Fire 3! Of course I remember! Dream's helping me book a f flight for you right now. Would next next week be okay? You flushed. Already? But it wasn't as if you didn't want to be by his side. You already missed being next to him. Oh, this is so sweet. But so strange as well. And what's even worse is you can't even read any of this. And it's the same stupid thing. It's just a stream and some bubbles. The next message came in and it was like you both had a connected brain cell. Wait. Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. Was that too quick? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. George, it's okay. I'm free, so it's okay. <laughs> smile. Um, yeah. Is this real? Oh my god. Wait, please don't look at my stream for like five seconds. Huh? Curiously, you peeked at the stream window in the bottom corner. George was jumping around in happiness, arms in the air, before returning back to the mic, seemingly telling the other male of your decision. You laughed to yourself, your cheeks hurting from how much you were smiling that entire time. You couldn't wait to see him again. Romantic end. Ooh. There's more? Oh. A new player. Interesting. You must be catching fire 3. I'm XD. I'm in charge of everything in between here. It seems that you've unlocked an ending. That's really cool. Say, if you could unlock everyone's ending, maybe you can help me find a secret code. I'm seeing an opening here and there, but I'm having some trouble in achieving the code I need. Maybe it'll benefit you too. But then it'll be up to you if you'd like to help me. It'd be really cool if you do. Until then, I'll see you next time. Should I do- Should I do more videos of this? Well, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below if you want me to get all the endings. Subscribe if you're new, and may the odds be in your favor. If you do want me to, um, do all the endings, then just comment down below or email me or something, just something, so I know if you want to see me do all the endings, because I'm not just going to do all the endings in, like, six videos, because... This was only two videos, so who knows.